Hello everyone, I'm Todd Kenrick and I'm joined with Jeremy Crawford and today we are talking about the one d and playtest and what we're talking about today is the Ardling Goliath Dragonborn, we're talking about the Cleric, some changes there, a whole lot of changes actually, and the Life Cleric as well as the Glossary and Spells. So this Unearthed Arcana focuses on several different things, all a part of the one d and playtest. Now, this includes revisions based on feedback we've gotten on the very first 1D&D Unearthed Arcana, and then it also includes material that's new to the playtest. Right. So the material that's new to the playtest is the cleric, along with revised versions of several spells that appear on the cleric's spell list. We then have revised versions of the Ardling and the Dragonborn. We also have a new species option here, which is a revised version of the Goliath, which I'll talk more a bit uh, later, as then also some tweaks in the rules glossary that I think will interest folks. Perfect. Uh, what, like, it's a, it's definitely like a smattering of a lot of different things in one d and this time around. So uh, you wanna jump into the Cleric? Yeah, let's talk about the Cleric. So what, what, what's new for the cleric and the life cleric? So one of the main things that people will notice when they open up this Unearthed Arcana is that the cleric's level progression has, has been altered in a number of ways. So I'm going to, if you're all right with it, I'm going to walk us through yeah, no, absolutely. What, what is going on with <laughs> our friend, the cleric. Yeah, people are going to want to know. <laughs> so first off, People love the cleric. The cleric consistently gets high satisfaction scores and has for the last eight years. And our goal with any proposed revision to a class is to lean into what people love about the class while also looking for opportunities to add additional options, looking for opportunities to uh, sort of apply oil to maybe any squeaks that are in the system. So in other words, refine things. If things weren't clear, make them clear. If things weren't seeing a lot of use in actual play, either improve them or replace them. Uh, because as we go through each class, we're looking at, are there features in each class that maybe haven't seen much use in the last eight years? If that's the case, those features for us are an opportunity either for improvement or replacement. Uh, again, we look for things that are unclear, and we also look for overall cohesion. How does the leveling up process for each class play out? And then how does it interact with multi-classing? Uh, because multi-classing is a part of the game, and we want to make sure that our classes are interacting with it in a way that's appropriate. So all of those factors play into what's going on uh, with the cleric. So the immediate thing that cleric players are going to see is you no longer choose in this version of the class your subclass at first level. Instead, subclass is at third level. This is something that was true in the three expert classes. Now, in, in their case, uh, like for instance, the ranger already was choosing its subclass at third level. Right. But here we are for the first time in the playtest, uh, playtesting a, cl a class who previously got their subclass at first level. Right. The trend for the whole playtest is going to be subclasses at third level. Gotcha. Here's why. What we have seen over the last eight years is that classes that have a subclass choice at first level and even sometimes at second level have two big issues with them. The biggest one is they are a blocker for brand new players. Mm. So Yeah, it's not good onboarding. Exactly. So if you have never played D&D &D before, many of our other classes, the fighter, the rogue, and others, right. you pick at first level, you might have a minor choice to make in a particular class, but otherwise you can get playing. Yeah. And it, typically, 
we've designed first level to only last a session or two, and then you're you're moved yeah. along until you finally make that meaty choice of subclass at third level. When we ask you to choose a subclass at first level, we are suddenly asking you, who may never have played D&D before, to look at every subclass option for that class before you have even played the class that's, that's, yeah. and make the most important decision for your class <laughs> for that your you future. will make. <laughs> right away. And even for a veteran D&D player, that's a tall order sometimes right. because you might be coming to a class you've never played before. Maybe you're, you normally play barbarians and you're like, I want to give the cleric a try. First level, choose your subclass and look at every subclass in existence now, we give, in the past, you know, we would recommend you take what we think of as the default subclass because we designed a default subclass for every class right. with beginning players in mind or veterans in mind who are trying a class out for the first time. But we, for a number of years now, have felt that a far better approach is to let you play the class itself for a couple of levels before you make this momentous decision. And so we're seeing that here in the cleric, where you, you choose your divine domain at third level instead of first. And I, 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 I sometimes am guilty of min-maxing myself, but when it comes to multi, multi-classing, someone is always looking for that easy level dip to get a few extra and, abilities. And that is because I mentioned there are two main issues <laughs> with the classes right. that have subclasses at first level. Right. I mentioned the, the, the most important one of the two issues is we're asking you to make this momentous decision before you even played the class, right. before you even see what it's like to be just a vanilla member of the class. But that second issue is multi-classing. Uh, we have found repeatedly that the classes that have a subclass choice at first level are the ones that end up in most of the multi-class combos that people often end up sort of gritting their teeth about yeah. uh, <laughs> in okay, particular groups. I see one more two-level dip into Hexblade. <laughs> and, and People are still going to do one or two level dips into classes. That's fine. Right. I mean, that's part of how multi-classing works. But we also want there to be more of a commitment to a class before you choose subclass. Right. And that's why subclasses are moving to third level. Perfect. Uh, now, the upside for the classes themselves uh, are many. And you'll see that here in the Cleric. By getting subclass off of first level, it then means we can actually do more with f first and second level. The 2014 cleric actually had no feature at third level right. other than getting spells. Now with this approach, the cleric has unique features at first, second, and third level. So the cleric actually uh, is coming out ahead, <laughs> in, in just in terms of sort of like quantity of of abilities, by getting subclass off of first level, because now at first level you not only get your spell casting, which of course is iconic for clerics, but channel divinity, which used to be at second level, now moves to first. Mm. And that means clerics can go back to their classic ability to turn undead starting at first level. Nice. But then we also beefed up Channel Divinity by giving it a second default option, which is Divine Spark. And this is an ability that clerics will have to channel just raw power from uh, the outer planes to either harm somebody or heal somebody. And this is really fun, I think, as an addition for clerics because it means clerics will have a built-in way to heal or harm independent of their spell choice. 
Uh, so, yes. so if, say, you've decided you're not going to prepare any healing spells, right. you can always now lean on your channel divinity with divine spark to heal somebody, or if, if, if you're feeling salty, yeah. <laughs> instead to harm one of your foes with it. Right. Um, now what this introduces also is a nice progression where the cleric has channel divinity, the vanilla version, before they then get an additional channel divinity option from their subclass. Whereas before mm -hmm. you were, you were sort of getting subclass first, then channel divinity, and then channel divinity came with it also a subclass add-on, you now get to experience each of these features just as a cleric. And now there will be more of a shared pool of experience for clerics as there is for our other classes. Because again, many of our classes already in the 2014 Player's Handbook don't choose their subclasses until third level. Right. And, and the advantage experientially of those classes is you get to a taste of just what it means to be a fighter before you flavor that with Battle Master or Champion or Eldritch Knight. Right. Uh, and here, you get this new juicy version of Channel Divinity at first level. And then at second level, you get a brand new feature where you get to select kind of a, a little bit of job you, that you have in your religious order or as a sort of solo religious person that leans into some of the mechanical themes that previously were in subclass, but we've now disconnected from subclass. Mm. Here are the three main examples. You can choose protector, meaning you have training uh, with heavy armor, and you also have martial weapon proficiency. Previously, this was built into certain subclasses, while other sub cleric subclasses had a more sort of either spellcaster focus or more of an almost mini expert focus where it's all about skill proficiencies. What we realized is that people often want to mix and match more. Some people, like previously, the life domain would come with heavy armor uh, training built into it, right, but right. some people maybe don't want to play a life domain cleric who's wearing armor. Right. So we've taken that choice out of subclass and put it into the class itself. So you decide at second level, are you a protector? Are you a scholar? If you choose scholar, uh, then you get extra skill proficiencies. Or are you a thaumaturge? Meaning you get a little bit more of magic. Now the nice thing is, is later on at higher level, we let you then choose a second one of these. So you get to kind of explore your different jobs either within your religious order, or again, if you're a solo practitioner, uh, you still get to delve into these different specializations. This then leads to then third level where you pick your subclass. Right. <laughs> and, and in this Unearthed Arcana, the subclass we provide is the life domain, because we think of the life domain as the default subclass, right. uh, which continues to be all about healing. That subclass is beloved, and it is mostly in the form that people are accustomed to, with some uh, tweaks and clarifications. Now, there's something else that is a part of the, the movement of the cleric subclasses from first level to third, we've made several other subclass related tweaks. Uh, the big one being also that no longer is divine strike or potent spell casting going to be a part of the new subclasses. Uh, this was another choice mm -hmm. that we made as designers similar to things like heavy armor training that we sort of pre-built into the subclasses, but which often didn't align with a particular player's fantasy for their cleric because they might play somebody where we chose Divine Strike, but they would rather be more of a spellcaster cleric and would rather have potent spellcasting. 
So riffing off what we did in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, we now give you a Blessed Strikes feature instead in the base class that you can use to enhance your weapon attacks and your cantrips. Uh, so we, we don't make you choose anymore, and we, well, rather, we don't make the choice for you. Right. Instead, we just give you this goodness in the base class. You also don't wait for 8th level anymore to get it. You now get it at 7th level in the base class. I mentioned before that at higher level you'd get another choice between Protector, Scholar, and Thaumaturge. Well, that kicks in at 9th level. You... You, it's a lot of, lot of stuff for the cleric. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, divine Intervention, because the cleric is now getting their subclass feature at 10th level, right. Divine Intervention has moved to 11th, and Divine Intervention now has a variable recharge rate. So before when you used it, it was a set amount of time until you could use it again. Right. Now you roll dice for it, and you could potentially use it as soon as two days from now, uh, if the if if you if the dice roll in your favor. Uh, Is it as powerful as it was before? <laughs> it's still really good. Uh, it's still like limited wish. <laughs> uh, where we we say the effect of any divine spell is appropriate. Uh, uh, <laughs> so we so we direct you to the divine spell list uh, to choose an effect there that you are you are praying for. What, what, what was the additional uh, choice that you had though before, like when it became, came to Protector and, and everything else? Oh, so, so at, at second level you choose Protector, Scholar, or Thaumaturge, yeah. and then at ninth level you can pick one of the other two that you didn't pick oh, at second level. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. So in the end you will get two of the three choices gotcha. uh, as, you, as you move through your career uh, as a cleric. Then, as people saw in the expert classes, the cleric's former 20th level ability has now moved down to 18th level, so you're going to get it sooner, and that is your divine intervention being usable uh, even more often and it happening automatically. There's right. no chance of failure, which now means at 20th level you get to choose an epic boon. And there are a few, a few new epic boon feats that appear in this Unearthed Arcana in support of the cleric. Uh, one of those being the epic boon of fate, mm -hmm. uh, where the cleric can roll a die and either help somebody succeed or help someone <laughs> fail. Right. Uh, and again, leaning into this theme of the cleric tapping into divine power and often altering reality because of that power. The cleric also has a list of suggested prepared spells, just as people have seen uh, in, our, in our expert uh, classes UA. And then some of those spells have new versions in uh, the glossary that is in this UA. Was there anything about the Life Cleric we needed to cover real quick? So the Life Cleric uh, gets features at 3rd, 6th, 10th, and 14th level. Uh, again, people are going to see that subclass progression has, in almost every case, been normalized, if not every case. Mm -hmm. And really here, because the Life Cleric uh, was so solid, it, there's mostly like functionality tweaks. For example, the, th the Disciple of Life feature uh, that l allows the Life Cleric to heal a little more uh, whenever they, when they cast uh, a healing spell, we have clarified what was actually our original intent but that we did not successfully communicate in the 2014 Life Domain Cleric is that this kicks in when you cast a healing spell on a creature. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of questions over the last eight years about, well, if I multi-class, the most common one combo is if I multi-class and uh, I'm a druid, mm -hmm. does this work on Goodberry? Given how we worded it before, yes, it does work on, it did work on Goodberry. In this revised version, it would not uh, because instead it's boosting the life energy that you channel to a creature. Right, right. Uh, and so it's 
it, it is not, it's no longer this sort of mysterious thing of does it apply or not to maybe spells that produce healing effects at a later time. Right, it's like, gotcha. no, as I'm channeling life energy to a person, you can boost it. Makes sense. Um, again, it was actually always our intent, but sometimes uh, the intent does not make it uh, fully into the words. And then we stand by uh, the words that are on the page. Right. Uh, because that's the game that people have in their hands. Uh, so most of what's here is, it's again, it's like little tweaks uh, to make it clearer how these things function. And the Life Domain Cleric continues to be an amazingly powerful healer. Uh, really, if a person wants to be all about the healing, the Life Domain continues to be the best place for that. 